In Japan, an infinity-shaped particle accelerator has been built. Soraka, a 17-year-old girl, created it and named it Mugen. The news channel is broadcasting Soraka's brilliance and talent. She excels in math and physics and has a PhD in computer programming, despite her young age. Yoshikazu and Motokazu Watanuki are twin brothers, but they are worlds apart. Yoshikazu is astute and confident, whereas Motokazu is blunt and reserved. Yoshikazu puts his brother in his place and travels to Thailand's Phi Phi Island to discover his own world. Motokazu works as a sushi chef at a sushi bar. Motokazu, who goes to college instead of his brother, is bored on the first day because of the difficult studies. He notices an older student, Hashizum, in class and strikes up a conversation with him during break. He is surprised that Hashizum is studying at such a ripe age. He inquires as to why he needs to study now, and Hashizum responds that the idea came to him after his wife died, and he was left all alone. He then thinks of what he is, and why is he there. It would be a shame to die without knowing anything about yourself. During these discussions, he asks Motokazu whether the universe came into being by chance. Motokazu has no idea about it, so he has no answers. Hashizum goes on to say that if the world came into being on its own, humans could also create the universe. Motokazu says it's impossible, but Hashizume responds that if he believes in God, it's impossible, but if he doesn't, humans can create a universe using a particle accelerator. He doesn't understand anything. Just then, Miss Hatamura approaches Motokazu, mistaking him for Yoshikazu, and asks him to assist Shiratori in the lab. She also informs him that he must bring Soraka to class, so that she can finish her graduation as a regular student and join the lab. Motokazu goes to meet Soraka, but when he sees her in the state of her room, he becomes even more nervous. Soraka notices him and asks him if he is a physics student, to which he enthusiastically responds that physics is at his core. So, she asks him about the four fundamental forces of physics. Since he knows nothing, he begins telling the four forces of marriage. He explains the reason for his visit, but she does not respond. When she learns, he is in Miss Hatamura's class. Soraka asks him what theme he chose, and he tells her that his research theme is creating the universe. Soraka decides to join the lab after hearing this. The next day, Motokazu motivates himself by wearing an Einstein-printed t-shirt with the energy formula written on the back. Sakura recognizes him, and Motokazu asks him not to tell anyone, but Sakura knows he's dumb so he asks what he'll be doing in the lab. But Motokazu promises to take care of everything. Meanwhile, Shiratori appears, approaching Eri when she notices him walking by. Motokazu does not anticipate Soraka's arrival. Miss Hatamura asks them about their research project after they all meet in the lab. Sudo prefers quantum physics, while Sakura is interested in superstrings and dimension theory. Shiratori chooses relativity, but Miss Hatamura claims that students choose this theory every year. When she asks Motokazu about his theme, he says he wants to work on the creation of the universe, which makes everyone laugh. Surprisingly, Soraka walks in and expresses her desire to work with Motokazu. Eri believes it is impossible and informs Soraka that it requires a lot of energy, to which Soraka questions him about whether it is possible to obtain enough energy. Eri still thinks it's impossible. Soraka then asks why, to which he responds that Epsilon is the answer to her why. Miss Hatamura says that they will debate it next week, and whoever succeeds in getting their point across will work on that theme. Motokazu is lying down in Yoshikazu's room when his mother calls him. His mother believes she is speaking to Yoshikazu and scolds Motokazu. She also thinks Motokazu is useless. Hearing his mother's words, he becomes depressed and decides that he will become intelligent regardless. Following that, he picks up physics books and begins reading, but he understands nothing. That is why he goes to Soraka the next day and questions her about inflation, antimatter, superstring theory, strings, and other topics. Soraka explains everything to him, but it is still hard for him to understand. Soraka also shows him the Beethoven's fifth note. Now he is asking more detailed questions, they both talk about it for a long time. This makes Motokazu realize that, according to the Big Bang Theory, someone existed before the universe was created.
Motokazu has developed an interest in physics and is now enjoying it, so he understands it. They believe that creating a universe within a universe would destroy the current universe. Soraka believes that if she uses Mugen, she will be able to obtain the energy she requires. Motokazu is forced to work in a rice field, alongside Hashizum, due to the destruction of the sushi bar. Motokazu has carefully prepared for the debate and has made his point to some extent. Surprisingly, Motokazu's point provides Soraka with the answer to her question. Soraka assists him and clarifies his point, and they win. After a while, Motokazu questions Sakura about the conflict between Soraka and Shiratori. He informs him that Shiratori is Eri's girlfriend, and that Eri is Soraka's ex-boyfriend, making them adversaries. Motokazu is taken aback, because Shiratori was his crush, and the reason he came here. Yoshikazu, on the other hand, arrived in Delhi from Thailand, but someone stole his passport in Delhi, and he is now in a very bad situation. Everyone is looking for work after graduation. Motokazu is also working hard in the rice field. One day, he learns from the news that Mugen's theory was incorrect and that only tax money was wasted. Soraka was an easy target, so all blame was placed on her. When Motokazu notices this, he becomes concerned for Soraka. Sudo shows Motokazu and Sakura a video of Soraka changing in the locker room. When he sees this, he becomes enraged and goes to the boy he suspects. However, the boy's fellow students severely beat him. He arrives at Soraka's house to meet her after receiving a message from her. Soraka tells him that she needed enough memory to create the universe, which she obtained from all over the world by exposing her video, but more important is to open the door to a new world. Soraka is fixated on the fact that life and death are made of something, but she is oblivious to the force that is separating the format pair. The fact that there is a force separating the pair, what is that force? This is what confuses her the most. Motokazu reassures her that she will definitely figure it out, but she immediately panics and says that she never called herself a genius. The media made her a genius, and now the same media is saying she isn't. She claimed she has no idea what her life's purpose is. Her mother desired to have a genius, so Soraka was fertilized in a laboratory. Motokazu tells her that hiding in a room is not a solution and that she must confront everything. He wants to take her out to calm her down, but Soraka refuses and tells him to leave. It's raining and Typhoon Number 7 is on its way to hit Tokyo. Motokazu joins Hashizum at the rice field lady's house. Motokazu inquires about the decorated Jomon-era decorations lying nearby, because he is unaware of them. According to Hashizum, people in that era saw the world differently. When he hears this, he notices that the waves like wares are spinning. He now thinks that everything in the universe, including typhoons, the sun, moon, earth, particles, and galaxies, is spinning. He approaches Soraka with this question, but she does not open the door to her room, where she lies exhausted and hopeless. Motokazu questions her about why they are spinning. Upon hearing this, Soraka realizes something and realizes what she was missing. Isolation and unification are caused by spirals and reverse spirals. She only needs to set up the spiral and its vector at the same time, but she's still missing a piece of the puzzle. Motokazu has had enough of waiting, and he breaks the door open. Soraka realizes she doesn't need any more pieces and must now solve the energy value of all the elements in order to create the universe. When Motokazu approaches her, she inquires as to how he defines God to which Motokazu responds that God is the creator of the universe. Soraka responds that if the creator of the universe exists, he will stop her at all costs. Motokazu tells Soraka that he has no right to try to stop her. If Soraka completes her task, the entire world will end. If she fails, Soraka will have no choice but to end herself. Motokazu asks if they're friends, but she doesn't respond. It's pouring outside, and Motokazu gets in an accident on his way home. When he gets home, he becomes enraged because he has no idea what to do. That's why he destroys his room. Soraka, on the other hand, has begun the work on her project. Because a typhoon has hit Tokyo, the weather outside is extremely bad. Motokazu sends a fax to Miss Hatamura, informing her that if Soraka does anything unusual, she should inform him. The entire city is suddenly plunged into darkness. The power goes out, and all power plants lose energy. 
Everyone is concerned about where that energy has gone. The chief of the power station calls Miss Hadamara and informs her that there is a problem with the operating system, which surprises her. Marikami is also speaking to Miss Hadamara, informing her that Mugen has begun to move, its east side ring is spinning backward, and the collision angle has been set. Miss Hadamara informs Murakami that Soraka is doing all this. Murakami gives the order to find Soraka on the west side. Soraka has hacked not just one power station, but all of Japan's power stations, which means she has hacked the entire Department of Defense mainframe. Hadamara arrives at the east wing of Mugen, but the door is locked, and she is unable to enter. Soraka has set traps in the system to prevent anyone from accessing it. Murakami forbids Hadamura from seeking assistance from the police because they are already heavily criticized. Hadamura, on the other hand, believes that would be foolish because Soraka is creating a universe. Motokazu packs his guitar and heads to the Mugen. Miss Hadamura informs Eri that Soraka has taken over Mugen. In a flashback, Eri takes pictures of the boy who secretly filmed Soraka's video in the locker room and threatens him that, if he doesn't upload Soraka's video to the internet, he will upload his picture. That is how Eri exposed Soraka's videos on the internet. When Eri discovers that Soraka is on Mujin's west side, he gets into it, seriously injuring his leg. Motokazu faces numerous difficulties on his path until he arrives at Mujin, where Miss Hatamura informs him that Soraka is inside Mujin. Motokazu inquires about the command center. He believes Soraka will be at Mugen's electric hut. He tells Miss Hadamura that if Soraka fails, she will end herself. Miss Hadamura tells him that Eri drove into the West Wing a while ago. For a short time, a black hole appears, and everyone is terrified when they see this. When Motokazu arrives at the West Wing, he discovers an injured Eri. Eri informs him that Soraka is not here. Motokazu walks away from him, asking for directions to the control room. Soraka sits among the wires in the electric hut, with her laptop. Motokazu climbs the tower, leaps from the top, and smashes through the roof of the electric hut to gain access. Instead of stopping Soraka, he sings a rock version of Beethoven's Ninth Note, which causes Soraka to cry and flee. Motokazu follows her out. Soraka is contemplating harm. She prevents Motokazu from approaching her but he only tells her that he made sushi for her. When Motokazu approaches her under the pretense of sushi, he drags her back to the bridge. Instead of asking her what's going on, he feeds her sushi. He inquires as to whether the sushi is tasty. Motokazu is delighted to hear that. His sushi has been praised by Soraka. Mujin's temperature starts to normalize, and everyone begins to relax. The city's electricity has also been restored. Eri terminates himself on the west side of Mujin, because he feels bad about what he did to Soraka. Soraka has been arrested on suspicion of hacking. Soraka's mother arrives at a press conference and tells the press that it's all her fault, because she wasn't a good mother. Motokazu enters the press conference, becomes enraged by the reporter's questions, and begins beating them up, resulting in his arrest. Yoshikazu has also returned from India. Motokazu is approached by the owner of the sushi shop, who wishes to reopen the sushi bar and hire him again. Because Motokazu has a lot of free time in prison, he writes his final thesis on sushi relativity and sends it to Miss Hadamura. Miss Hadamura is asked to listen to a CD with the thesis papers while checking the thesis in which he sings a rock song for Einstein. He implies physics to prepare delectable sushi at the bar. Soraka meets Motokazu after being released from prison. 